I recreated Diego Velasquez's Immaculate Conception in Minecraft. The overall project took me about two hours to complete, and with a little help using a website, I was able to find which blocks were most compatible to replicate the actual painting. In this video, I go over a brief biography of Diego Velasquez, a background about the Immaculate Conception painting, and how I was able to put the painting all together in Minecraft. Oh, and one more thing. This video was created for an art history class which surveys Baroque and Rococo art. If you go to this school, then I highly recommend taking this class to fulfill the Gen Ed requirement. Diego Velasquez is one of the most popular Spanish artists of his time. Born in 1599 in Seville, Spain, Velasquez painted throughout his life until his death in 1660. He began his painting career under the apprenticeship of Francisco Pacheco in 1611, and Pacheco was a valuable mentor, having influential connections with the Spanish royal court and working with other leading artists. In 1617, he was accepted into the Painters Guild of St. Luke and began his independent career as a painter. Being a part of this guild allowed him to accept commissions from the Holy Church, the main commissioner for most of his artworks. During that same time, he married his mentor's daughter, Juana, and had two daughters. Velasquez's paintings can be split into four time periods, 1617 to 1622, 1622 to 1629, 1629 to 1636, and 1636 to 1660. From 1617 to 1622, Velasquez painted his first religious works and portraits. He was also engaged with the genre of bodegones, which was basically tavern slash kitchen scenes, along with still lives of fruits, vegetables, and even flowers. From 1622 to 1629, Velasquez grew as a painter after traveling to places like Madrid and Toledo. There he became majorly influenced by works from painters such as El Greco and Pedro de Oriente. At this time, he also received his first court commission to paint King Philip IV, and bolstered the privilege that he was the only painter allowed to paint the king. Near the end of this time frame, he was visited by the other famous Spanish painter, Rubens, and through this connection was able to visit Italy. From 1629 to 1636, his travels to Italy and employment with the Spanish court further developed his growth as a painter. And from 1636 to 1660, Velasquez produced most of his popular works, one of them being Las Meninas. Diego Velasquez's Immaculate Conception was created during his early period as an independent painter in 1618. It was commissioned along with another painting called St. John the Evangelist on the island of Patmos. Although there is no physical record on who commissioned these two pieces, they were first recorded in 1800 in the chapter house of the convent of the Shad Carmelite Order in Seville. Some art historians believe this painting to promote the celebration in the city of a papal decree defending the mystery of the Immaculate Conception. If you don't know what the Immaculate Conception is, it's essentially the belief that the Virgin Mary was conceived without sin. The Immaculate Conception is an oil on canvas painting, is vertically oriented to display it as an altarpiece, and demonstrates his artistic ability in conveying a strong contrast between light and dark. An interesting fact about this painting is that he used his wife Juana as the model for the Virgin Mary. You can see that the Virgin Mary's eyes are casted downwards, indicating that she is looking down on the earth while she is up in heaven. The Virgin Mary is often depicted in the colors of blue and gold, reflecting her role as the Queen of Heaven and her heavenly grace. Today, you can find the Immaculate Conception at the National Gallery in London. So, how did I turn this into a bunch of pixelated squares? Well, the first thing I had to do was choose a painting, and one of the artists that I learned about in my art history class was Diego Velasquez. After scrolling through his artworks, I ultimately decided on the Immaculate Conception, because my elementary and middle school was named after the Virgin Mary. I won't get any more specific than that, but think of it like every other Catholic school named Our Lady of dot dot dot. After finding which painting to pixelate, I then used this website called Scriptolab to do all the work for me. Basically, pixelating the painting and displaying which Minecraft block to use. And you may be wondering, well, Johnny, isn't that cheating? And to that I say, I'm not really the creative type, and wouldn't have been able to figure out which specific blocks to use. 
That would have taken a huge amount of time, so much that would it, it would have taken me weeks, even months to complete. So having this website really was a lifesaver and will aid in my future projects because in my eyes, I'm the one who built it, I just needed to know which materials to use. Then it was time to get to work. I used my laptop as my second monitor and on Wednesday, May 5th at 8am, I started recreating the Immaculate Conception. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this took me two hours to complete. That doesn't seem like a lot, but those two hours were one of the most relaxing I felt during school. I had music going through my headphones, was looking at my laptop to check which block to use, and then back to my main monitor to place it in the game. And yeah. I truly felt like an artist making my own work. So, this is what the final outcome came to be. Not too bad when comparing it to the actual painting, and I couldn't be more proud of myself for being able to do it. To conclude, thanks to my art history class, I was able to engage more deeply into the course material recreate an art piece which I was genuinely interested in, and was able to recreate it using a medium which I enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this little art history lesson and my recreation of Diego Velasquez's Immaculate Conception.